so hey guys so in today's video we are going to talk about page retention in vllm so if you go guys don't know about vllm it is a framework that is currently used for llm inference now for basic understanding of llms i would recommend you to ha have some uh, basic knowledge about transformers what is inference what is training and everything and then you can jump to this topic because i am expecting that you know what is attention then only you will be able to understand what is page retention cool i think we can start so let's start about kv cache what is KV, kv cache so kv cache stands for key value cache and it is a very important uh, thing in the whole inference part of the large language models so let's start with the very basic at every step of the inference what are we interested in only in the last token right which is uh, has been output by the model by the the last token because we already have the previous one so the model needs to access to all the previous token to decide on which token to output since they constitute its context right so uh, we have talked about this in the KB cache video, but let's revise it so you can see here, right? Uh, as we generate queries, key and the uh, and the value, so we get the attention. So every time we are calculating, uh, we are calculating this, and uh, we know that we don't need this because we are masking the mo model, so we don't require the future tokens. We only require this part. So in this part also, why do we need to calculate this again, like this? So we are calculating this again. Now if we do this. So we are calculating this part again, even though we had calculated it previously. So why can't we cache this? So we are caching this particular part. This is known as a key value cache. Now, in the uh, example that VLLM has given in its paper, that in NVIDIA A140 GB, uh, if you deploy a Lama model, let's say, so 26 GB is taken by parameters, and you can't reduce this until and unless you uh, quantize the model. But this KV cache is around 30%. Just imagine 30 percent of your GP memory is taken by this KV cache. This can be adjusted. That is what VLLM is telling us. So let's understand through this example. Uh, uh, for for understanding this, you will need to understand what is fragmentation. So fragmentation uh, can can be explained through an analog analogy, right? Imagine there is a fragmented disk, uh, like flowers on a field dispersed all over, whereas a non-fragmented disk is like a very beautiful garden. Now, if someone is going to ask you that go and pick up a flower, where will you pick up from? Definitely a garden. That is fragmented disk, right? So, but if you will uh, ask that person to go and pick a flower from a, a non-fragmented disk, uh, uh, it, it will be very confusing. So, a non-fragmented disk is like a very beautiful garden and a fragmented disk is like to be flowers on a field dispersed all over the, all over the place. Same happens here. KV cache memory management is uh, in existing systems has three types, right? The reserved memory, the internal fragmentation and external fragmentation. We are going to talk about that. Now, if you see, say, uh, suppose you have given a request to the model. That request is, let's say 2048 is the maximum length that Lama, the La uh, Lama model can produce. Just for a minute, imagine that. So this 2048 will be reserved by that particular model. And this is the current state. This is the generated slot. And let's say two slots for future. But these 2038 slots are never used. Just imagine this much space was never used. And similarly, if you see here, this is another part of the uh, GPU memory. This uh, has been reserved. This is current iteration. This is for future. These much slots are again never ever used. It's getting wasted. Now you're going to ask me, what is this internal fragmentation and external fragmentation? I'll give you an example. Internal fragmentation, imagine, suppose you have a, a row of parking spaces for cars. Now, where each parking space is exactly the same size. Now, let's say you have a small car that can only uh, that only takes up half of a sp parking space, right? Even though the small car doesn't need the entire space, it still occupies one parking spot, right? This unused space within the parking spot is wasted. So this is like internal fragmentation in computer memory, where fixed size block memories are allocated, but not all of the space within these blocks is always used, you know, leading to wasted space. Now, coming to this external fragmentation, again, think of that parking lot example. This time without that mark uh, marking pa pa parking space, there is a like area you can park anywhere. Now car park wherever ca cars get parked wherever they find a, a room, leaving gaps of various size between them, right? And over time as cars come and park wherever they find gap, there these gaps make it hard to park new cars. So let's say you have two gaps here, two gaps here. Now uh, your car takes three gaps to let, let's say these three three blocks to park. Now it's useless for you, right? Even though two plus two is equals to four and your car take three blocks, it's useless for you because it's uh, not together, right? So this is like external fragmentation in computer memory. 
where free memory is divided into small scattered chunks that make it difficult to allocate large contiguous blocks of memory so yeah this is the whole concept uh, of this kv cache so you see here a lot of memory is getting wasted so let's say this is your transformer you give it some input it can be a yes or no it can be a 100 token thing a, a whole sentence but every time your model is reserving a fixed amount of space for you so this is a wastage of space right so then comes the concept of page retention right it comes as to a rescue so for understanding page retention you need to first understand this os paging concept i hope you guys are familiar with paging uh, what is paging so uh, with paging uh, we have the concept right uh, where the contiguous part uh, the contiguous memory whole uh, concept is eliminated so we are dividing the physical memory into a fixed size uh, contiguous blocks and both the virtual address and physical memory are divided into these fixed size blocks that are called pages and frames so this is the logical memory the page table and the physical memory so th it gets ma mapped into each other using this page table so this is what exactly the vllm library is doing for attention so here we did for processes right here we are doing for attention page attention to handle gpu memory more efficiently so this is example right uh, vllm identified this whole part that uh, this page that, uh, that memory fragmentation due to this kv cache can take a lot of memory which uh, which is going unused so if you look in this example right uh, the key and value vectors are spread across three blocks and the three blocks are not contiguous of the on the physical memory at each time the kernel is multiplying that query qu vector qi of the query token and the qu uh, key vector kg of uh, in a block to compute that attention score and later multiplying it with the value whatever that is so in summary what is happening here the attention algorithms allow the kv blocks to be stored in non contiguous physical memory which enables more flexible page memory management in vllm so we are breaking the traditional uh, way of storing the uh, key value vectors right now you can see this example the attention computation for block 0 and then you have for uh, block 2 then you have for block 0 yeah so this is block 0 then you have block 1 then you have block 2 so this is a very good example of showing you how things are working here now i will give you guys a minute to go and go through this diagram because it's very important now this this is a whole concept that you know kv cache of two request at the same time in vllm so let's start cool so uh, you know we right know right that the kv block manager here is is that maintains this block table right the mapping between the logical and physical kv blocks of each request so each block table entry records the corresponding blocks of a logical block and the number of filled po positions right so this is the whole concept we, in, in this figure let's let's take this this example only we are showing that that in vllm while managing the memory for two sequences right so the logical blocks of the two sequences are mapped to different physical blocks within this space reserved by the block engine in this gpu workers right so the neighboring logical blocks of the both sequences do not need to be contiguous you know just understand this they do not need to be contiguous in physical gpu memory and the space of physical blocks can be effectively utilized by both sequences right so this is a, a very interesting concept so what were the problems before it was taking up to uh, let's say 1.7 billion gb for uh, 1.7 gb sorry for a single sequence in llama 13 billion parameters model and 60 to 80% of memory was getting waste right it was going it was going to uh, fragmentation and overization which was causing the waste now after using page retention with the it is coming down to 4% only 4% so we are actually the, you know boosting our utilization in this uh, gpu memory so let's take exa take this example this is a very good example to understand this uh, what is happening here we are uh, demonstrating that how vllm executes this page retention and manages the memory during the decoding process of a single input sequence let's understand so we talked about operating system virtual memory right we but in this os virtual memory vllm does not require reserving the memory for the maximum possible generated sequence initially that was 2048 let's say instead it reserves only the necessary kv blocks to accommodate the kv cache generated during prompt computation in this case the prompt has seven tokens right so vllm maps the first two logical kv blocks 0 and 1 to two physical kv blocks that is 0 7 and 1 respectively right and in the prefill step vllm generates the kv cache of the prompts and the first output token with a conventional self retention algorithm so vllm is then storing the kv cache of the first four blocks right in the in a logical block 0 so you have the logical block 0 right so here it is 
so after doing that the rename uh, the uh, the and the following three tokens in the logical block one right so yeah cool after that the remaining slot is reserved for the subsequent uh, generation phase right so in the first auto regressive decoding step let's say vllm generates a new token with a page retention algorithm on physical block 7 and physical blocks uh, uh, which is this one right 7 and 1 so the uh, after this has happened since one slot is remaining on the last logical block the newly generated kv cache is stored there and the block table field record is updated so at the second time let's say the second time this is happening uh, the second time decoding step as the last logical block is already filled vllm stored the newly generated kv cache in a new uh, logical block right that is block 3 where, when it is going to come so vllm allocates a new block that is block 3 the physical block 3 uh, okay cool yeah this 3 and uh, it stores the mapping in the block table so this block table is has been mapped here so it's very simple if you understand the paging concept now parallel sampling is a very good uh, usage of this whole vllm page retention thing so in this example you can say uh, we are showing the parallel decoding for uh, two outputs right since both output are sharing the same prompt you see here both are sharing the same prompt we only reserve space for one one copy of the prompt state right at the prompt phase now the logical blocks of the prompts of both sequences right of both sequences are mapped to the same physical block obviously so the logical block 0 and 1 of both sequences are mapped to physical block 7 and 1 you see 7 and 1 so there is this reference count since a free since a free single physical block can be mapped to multiple logical uh, uh, blocks right we are th th keeping a reference count of uh, for each physical block so let's see in this case right a reference count ca uh, he here for 7 and 1 both are 2 because there are two reference and at the generation phase the two output sample different output tokens right and uh, we need separate storage for that kb cache so VLLM has this concept of copy on write mechanism. So, in this one, whenever sample A1, let's say sample, uh, let's say this is the one, right? So, whenever sample 1 it needs to write to its last logical block, that is logical block uh, 1, that is logical block 1, right? Uh, uh, and VLLM recognizes the reference count here. The reference count that is 2 uh, is greater than 1. It allocates a new physical block that is physical block 3 here. Now, in it instructs the block engine to copy the information from block 1 to block 3 and uh, decreases the reference count to 1 from 2 to 1 so next time when the sample a2 the when the sample a2 writes to the physical block 1 uh, which is uh, this one uh, the reference count is already reduced to 1 so a2 directly writes its newly generated cache to physical block 1 so yeah it's very straightforward so in in summary if i confused you guys VLM is enabling sharing of most of the space used to store the prompt's KV cache across multiple output samples with the exception of the final logical block which is managed by the copy on write mechanism. So this is another example where parallel sampling is happening. Cool. I think we are good to go. And that was it from my side. Uh, uh, this this uh, whole VLM and page retention is very important if you are working on the LLM inference part. So I'll expect you guys to go and read the paper. I'll give pin da that in the description as usual. And you guys can subscribe my channel if you like the content and suggest me anything you guys want to uh, understand on. Thank you and have a nice day.